I want to start by looking backwards, because I think we can learn a lot from the past. And I want to start, my wonderful assistant would bring me the most amazing device I think I've ever worked with. It is a Wi-Fi enabled kettle. <coughs> I'm sure you're all going, why do you have a Wi-Fi kettle? Well, it's a brilliant device. As you put it in your, your kitchen, you fill it with water, then when you wake up in the morning, you grab your mobile app, you press a button, and by the time you got to the kitchen, you've got a kettle of boiling water, saving you, what, 30 seconds of your day? Get in. I, I had, by the way, well, I did this talk in the States a little while back, and um, I got the kettle out, and everyone looked at me blankly, which is why it says tea kettle. The minute you say tea kettle, they get it, but they don't have the concept of a kettle mostly in the States. They'll, they'll make their coffee by microwaving a cup, a cup of water. Wow. Anyway. We looked at this wonderful 100 pound Wi-Fi kettle and thought, I wonder if it's secure. Well, how do you hack a kettle? There you go, here is the, the instruction set. This is what you need to do. Number one, like any network device, the first thing we're gonna do is port scan it to find out which ports and services are running. And we discovered it was running Telnet. It's not a good start, is it? Plain text, unencrypted protocol. We don't use Telnet anymore, do we? But, hmm. So let's connect to it over Telnet, shall we? And I've actually got my kettle is sat over here. Uh, doo -doo. There we go. Ah, all right. Hey, do you see AT top left? The Hayes AT modem command set. Do you remember that? You've all used it. ATDT from your dial-up at ISP, when we used to make a racket. We've all used the AT mo modem command set. So we know we're going back in time already. But it's got a password, so we're stuffed now, right? What am I going to do? Brute force it? No, take forever. I don't know. So we took the base apart. And what we found in the base was this Wi-Fi module. Interesting, OK. Got a Wi-Fi module. What am I going to do next? Well, I use my favorite friend, Google. There you go. And there is the manual, the spec sheet for that Wi-Fi module. I don't know. My amazing Uber Elite hacking skills. Check for the word password. Oh, there you go. There's the password. Six zeros. God. All right, so where are we now? All right, six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Oh, wow. Now I'm talking kettle. An amazing hacker. So I've got a terminal interface, and this is when I spent a bit more time starting to read through the manual, reverse engineered the mobile app, just pulled apart the, um, the Android package file, and I could see how it was working, what it was doing, and uh, the various commands it was sending. And one command really piqued my interest, it was the command AT plus key. That was the command you used to give it your Wi-Fi password. That's what the mobile app calls in order to tell the kettle it's a client on your Wi-Fi network. But it needs your Wi-Fi pre-shared key to do that. I wondered what would happen if I typed it and I got the Wi-Fi network key back. Ooh. OK. So how would I exploit this in the real world? Well, what I would do is I would probably sit outside your house on the street outside with a directional Wi-Fi antenna. I'd point it at your kitchen. I'd do a deauth attack, so I'd knock it off your Wi-Fi access point. I'd then do an evil twin attack, so I'd create a, a, a clone of your access point with a higher signal strength. Your kettle would join my rogue access point. I'd then use six zeros, AT plus key, and now I'm on your home network. And if you haven't changed your home router admin password, I could now intercept all your traffic. I hope this community, most of you have changed your router admin password, but so often we find people haven't. Now, we are ethical and responsible. We always disclose privately and confidentially to the um, organizations involved. We give them a chance to fix the bugs before we go and tell anybody else. That's responsible disclosure. It's the right way to do it. So we disclosed this vulnerability to the kettle manufacturer. And they said, it's OK. You need specialist knowledge. What? The command prompt. Get in. And also, they really surprised us by suggesting that you'd be really lucky to find a user with a kettle. <laughs> 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 which really surprised me. But anyway, that's when a really interesting feature of Wi-Fi comes to the fore, um, the concept of war driving. So lots of research groups, including us, us, go out and do war drive. So we, as we're out and about, we just correlate the GPS position of Wi-Fi access points. And there's a database on the internet called wiggle.net, W-I-G-L-E, the Wireless Integrated Geographic Location Engine, where you can go and pop in an SSID, and it'll give you the GPS location, so you can go and find the kettles in the west of London. Great. Fun, hey? Um, they never actually fixed the bug. They focused instead on releasing the Kettle 2.0, uh, which 
was using a slightly different chipset. It was using the ESP8266 from Expressive Systems, which is really only a hobbyist chipset. It doesn't have any concept of a, a trusted execution environment, a secure enclave, anywhere to store uh, crypto keys securely. So, um, and that also went wrong, but then they made a coffee machine, which was good, so we could hack it and make coffee at the same time. And finally, uh, they actually went out for independent advice. They actually spoke to a, a, com a company that consulted on secure embedded systems. Uh, they're, I think they're called Electric Imp, really cool bunch of, um, of people. And they then created the iKettle 3.0, which is actually secure. It took them four years to do it, but they finally got there. Surely, surely they would have been better off taking a bit of advice on day one about cyber rather than trying to respectively reverse engineer it into the product. It can cost 10 to 20 times as much to reverse cybersecurity back in compared to building it on day one. Right. Well, actually, there's an interesting story about that. <laughs> so <laughs> this kettle's not made anymore. And uh, I love doing this demo. And the kettles don't last that long. So whenever I see an eye kettle 1.0 pop up on eBay, there's a fight to bid for it. And I often find myself bidding against other security researchers trying to get hold of a damn kettle. <laughs> anyway. <laughs>